This weapon that Clive is holding is the most powerful weapon in the game. This weapon is called God or Damrung, and it'll be one of the most powerful weapons you'll be using in this game on your first playthrough. The stats are 375 attack and 375 stagger damage, which is a lot. No other weapon tops this weapon, and I'll be walking you through the step-by-step -step guide on how to obtain this. Also, fun fact, God or Damrung is the German translation of Ragnarok, and you'll be seeing why in the video. Let's talk about the prerequisites first. You're going to have to be on the main story quest number 62, which is called Across the Narrow. When you're on this main story quest in your game, a bunch of side quests will pop up. You also need to have completed Blacksmith Blues 1, 2, and 3, which we have covered on the channel. So subscribe and check out videos for that. So you're going to start this quest by finding August, and he's going to talk about this bad news happening in Dravosh. And basically, it's going to be the village where you were in the Blacksmith Blues 3 quest. So go ahead and just accept that quest and head over to that spot on the map. So accept that and then prioritize that. And this will also give you 50 reputation, which is going to be great for unlocking items, which we'll also cover in another video. Anyway, once you unlock that quest, just go ahead and open up your world map and go down down to Dalmachia and go to Dravosht, which is a town which has its own obelisk. Once you're there, head towards the quest marker, which is right through this town over here. Don't forget to stock up on potions for this fight because this is going to be a multi-layered fight. And there's a shop right here that you can get it from. Then after that, just go ahead and approach August. And what you're going to be doing is fending off the Akashic that is going to be attacking the area. Blackthorn will also show up. The whole squad is here. And directly right from this interaction, the game will bring you to the gates on the outside where you're going to be facing the enemies. The first big one that you're going to be fighting is a very large enemy surrounded by a bunch of hounds. So as usual, you want to prioritize the wolves and then focus on the bighorn. Uh, I like to just use this to get rid of the smaller enemies. It's very good to upgrade your flames of rebirth. It's great to take that out. That way you can just focus on the bighorn and take that one out with no problem. So just break its shield, get it down to 50%, use whatever you have to in order to do that. Once the bighorn is down, you're going to get more enemies that show up. This time it's going to be a bunch of scorpions and some of those flowers. Uh, so these will be a very easy group to take out with no problems. Finally, the last enemy that approaches is going to be a griffin. Now, griffins are also a main hunt in this game. So this griffin might be a little difficult for you, but it shouldn't be too bad. Griffins are going to have these attacks where they throw whirlwinds down, where they're going to lunge attack on you. And you just really have to stay out of those things. Like right there, that green attack, stay away from that. When your character's stuck inside of that, you can lose a lot of health. So be aware of that. Keep your distance during those parts and try to nuke its shield as fast as possible. After you defeat this griffin, you're going to enter another cutscene, and it seems like you've done, right? You finished a bunch of enemies, but no. Look right above, and you're going to see... <laughs> a much harder enemy above you. So here it comes. This is going to be the fun fight. So even though this Chimera looks really intimidating, I actually find it to be a lot easier than the Griffin Hunt. So Chimera is going to be using elements pretty much to take you out. It's going to be throwing these ice area of effects, and it's going to be doing a lot of flamethrowers and then doing these slash attacks at you. All you have to do is really just avoid that. Whenever flamethrowers come out, just get behind it. When it throws out an ice attack, just move away from that area. And if it does any lightning attacks, you can move away from it. So it's going to be pretty simple in order to take this down. If you do have Shiva's ability, gliding across it multiple times does freeze it. So that's also another viable option that you can use where you can get damage on it. So just do what you need to do until you take out the Chimera. Once the Chimera is done, you're going to get the enemy slain screen and that is going to show you a total experience of 1,300, 240 AP, which is your ability points, which is not bad, and 960 gil. You don't get anything crazy from this besides some basic crafting items, but you know what? It's not too bad of a fight. After this cutscene, is over, go right to the hideaway. When you arrive at the hideaway, approach Blackthorn and it's going to feel like you got two blacksmiths this time, the one from the village and Blackthorn together, and they're going to team up to help create a weapon for you using all the items previously attained from every other blacksmith blues quest. Once they're done, you're going to see the sword that you're going to be getting for absolutely free. You didn't have to do any crazy work besides completing a quest. And this sword is going to be called Ragnarok, the sword to end all swords. And if you remember at the beginning of the video, I I mentioned that God or Damarong is the translation of German of this weapon, Ragnarok. So that's going to be really cool. So keep that in mind because this Ragnarok is actually going to be the base recipe weapon that we're going to need in order to create it. So you're going to have your first part, but don't hesitate to use Ragnarok in the meantime if you're at that point in the game. Now, if you're curious, Ragnarok does 325 attack and 325 stagger damage. So it is a very powerful weapon just on its own. But in order to create God or Damarong, which does 
does 375 attack and 375 stagger damage, you're going to need the Ragnarok, which you already got, three Ori Calcum, two Dark Steel, and one Primitive Battle Horn. And you could see that the Dark Steel and the Primitive Battle Horn have an interesting symbol on it, which means they are going to be drops that you can only obtain from hunts. But Ori Calcums also can be obtained. So basically every single one. Let's go into how you're going to be getting all these materials. The first material that we'll be focusing on is Ori Calcum, and you're going to need three of them. Let's talk about three hunts that give you Ori Calcum. Let's talk about the first hunt, which is going to be the Breaker of the World. This is a hunt that is going to unlock after main story quest 44, which is out of the shadow. Go to East Pool Obelisk in the province of Rosaria, and from here, you're going to be crossing a bridge, coming down the Broken Hilt area, crossing another bridge, going through Rianon's Ride, then follow this pathway across this area and go straight through Cressidia until you reach this dead end. When you arrive here, that's when you find the enemy and the hunt will begin in front of you. You're going to open this grassy area and you're going to see the enemy right over there. It's facing the opposite wall. And as you approach it, the cutscene should trigger. And just like that, Atlas rank S will be ready to fight you. This is going to give you 20,000 gil and 50 reputation points. So here we go. The fight begins. It is level 45. So you can fight this one pretty early because like I mentioned, it's going to take place after main story quest 44 out of the shadow. Now, Atlas does a lot of AoEs and a lot of big and heavy swings. So make sure you're countering and dodging these. It's going to be very important not to get hit. Atlas can do a lot of damage to you. So keep this in mind. Atlas is also going to throw long range attack at you and also rush you so be very very careful at that that sword strike will happen multiple times and he goes for a big swing and eventually you will be able to finally destroy atlas and you'll get a playstation trophy if you happen to beat it and get the notorious mark slain you'll see the spoils that says the exact amount you get 15,000 exp 120 ability points 20k gil and you'll also see you get yourself all in iron material and you get yourself the ori calcum so there's your first one the next hunt that we're going to be doing is known as the tricephalact terror and this is going to become available after main quest number 62, which is called Across the Narrow. Now, in order to head over to this quest, all you have to do is go to the Dalmalkia region and go to the Dali Mill in Obelisk. Once you're there at the Obelisk, just go ahead and turn around and exit right out of the area. As soon as you're outside, you can summon your Chocobo so you can get to this location a lot faster. At first, I thought it's going to be difficult to find this hunt, but this hunt is actually pretty simple. So all you have to do is head straight out past these gates and then go ahead and make a left as soon as you make a left you're going to enter into the open desert area and you're just going to continue to go straight and then once you're straight you see that monster all the way in the background over there well that's going to be your hunt it's going to be right in front of your face making this very easy to locate and as you approach it the cutscene should kick in where it shows the hunt and this thing looks absolutely terrifying so this is the gorgi mera rank s 20k gil and 50 reputation points now while this looks like a very difficult hunt believe it or not this one is actually pretty decently easy this thing is going to have very few attacks uh, in terms of predictability. So it's going to have these ice ones that it throws out that explodes into an AoE. It's going to have a flamethrower. It's going to have this electric circle that spins on the floor. And all you have to do is just stay out of it completely. It's also going to do charge attacks on you. And that's something that you can just do a precision dodge on. And you want to take advantage of every time it's vulnerable when it makes those dashes and you move away. Go ahead and just destroy this thing and go to town and break it to do some damage. Now, this is also another AoE attack that does it just drops random bolts of lightning in the area and then get to work on it when you stagger the enemy now there's two other attacks that the gorgamera does it's going to be a big lightning circle all the way on the outside part so you have to run quickly towards the inside and then it's going to do the ram's voice which is an inside ice aoe so you have to kind of go in then out of the circle it's kind of cool because i remember this from final fantasy 14 the mmo for a boss fight in a dungeon against one of these things uh and then it's going to start just doing a lot of these attacks that you've seen and the pattern just basically repeats so just continue to just beat it up and dodge its crazy attacks like the dragon's voice there it is again and then the ram where you just gotta back out and finally you reach the point where you will defeat this enemy and as soon as you finish you're going to get the confirmation that the notorious mark is slain followed by the reward so you're gonna see that you get 15,000 exp 120 ability points and you're going to get yourself the drop of the ori calcum which is going to be the only drop this monster has literally its purpose is for us to create the sword how cool is that the final hunt that we're going to be doing is known as the masterless marauder and i accidentally already ran 
and into the behemoth king so it shows up on the poster if you make an interaction with it so this is what we'll be hunting now this one's going to be a very convenient one so when you open up your world map you're going to want to head over to the opposite side of the map over here in this area and go ahead and go right over here to this obelisk when you arrive you're going to see the hunt right in front of you uh, so this is going to be pretty easy now by the way for this hunt to be unlocked you're going to need to have main quest number 67 back to their origin which is pretty much the last quest in the game so when you have that unlocked you'll be able to also do this hunt so it's going to start off with these crazy attacks that are meteor attacks called the four horsemen and then it's going to do these spinning attacks as well it does a lot of charges on you so you want to be aware of that i think behemoth king out of all these three hunts is the most difficult one because it, it just does so much damage what i like to do is equip shiva and uh just run into it with some ice attacks whenever i can um i like to play range against this because i just don't want to get caught i could cheese it by putting on my cheap accessories but i i wanted to play the game a little bit more on the difficult side you want to be really careful of this attack the whirlwind one because you can see my health go completely down so whenever you see the clouds start to form under you get away from that you will burn and rip through your potions every single time if you don't move out of the way of that i use shiva a lot so that way i could land attacks and freeze it completely so i combo that with some big hits freeze it and then do some damage to kind of wind it down and stagger it a little bit more it also does a lot of aoe lightning attacks and does these rush charges at you it's just an absolutely chaotic monster now you'll notice as the behemoth king's health gets a little lower it'll start comboing and combining multiple aoe's so just be aware of that it'll do the four horsemen attack followed up by lightning strikes on the floor mail storm and then it's also going to throw comets out from behind it and throw the whirlwind at you so it's just gonna keep piling on these attacks so you're gonna be doing a lot of damage and i like to stick to a lot of range if i can at any time problem is it also rushes you so you can come up with an interesting strategy for beating the behemoth king but i'll go over that more in my hunt video once you're finally able to defeat the behemoth king you will then get the notification that you have destroyed it and it's probably the most satisfying one to take out and it'll drop a couple things one it'll give you 20,000 exp and 200 ability points as well as giving you an item called the behemoth shackle as well as our final ori calcum that we'll need for our crafting now if you're having a hard time with any of these hunts well you're in luck because there's also two side quests that will be able to give you the ori calcum when you finish it the first quest like we said is going to be duty on dying too this quest is going to be really simple all you have to do is head over to tabor in the dalmalkian republic region and you're just going to have to go ahead and talk to cairo once you talk to cairo he's going to send you over to an abandoned village on your map so where you're going you're to go to this village open up the gate and you're going to find a bunch of cultic people anyway then you're going to find a the third chair hiding instead of a house talk to the third chair you're gonna fight a bunch of enemies and you're gonna have to fight a big enemy known as the titus enemy which is basically an, a, an iron giant kind of style enemy which you've already pretty much dealt with earlier in this video once you're done with this enemy you're just gonna go back to the original quest giver talk to him and he will give you your ori calcum for completing the quest the next side quest is going to be under new management 2 which is only going to show up once you unlock the final story quest as well number 67 which is the origin you're gonna want to head over to the north reach area and go towards the veil from here you just want to go ahead and talk to isabel who's down in her usual spot after talking with Isabel, you're then going to go back outside to the main gate. All the green quests, you're then going to talk to Philip right over here. You're then going to head over to Gregor's Weep, which is pretty much just straight away from that area at this quest marker location, and a bunch of revenants will just show up. All you have to do is just use a quick AoE to take them all out. After that, a second wave of them will show up, so just go ahead and take out the second wave as well. Once you're done with all the enemy waves, you'll get your spoils of, of 900 experience, 60 ability points, after you're done, you're going to transition back to the gate area where you're going to have one of the Archdukes talk it out with Isabel. And then all of a sudden, the enemies are going to start approaching the area. Uh, so what you want to do is then, after all those cutscenes, make your way towards the Aura Flame in the open fields. And once you're there, you're going to notice a bunch of enemies making their way towards you. So all you have to do is take out a bunch of the minor enemies, which is going to be pretty easy to slay. Then you're going to have the big enemy show up, which is going to be this, the Undertaker. 
Breaker. Uh, that's going to be the hardest one out of all the fights. So just make sure to AoE the area and don't forget to take out the small enemies because they can get a little annoying during this fight. I was so close to dying at the end of this fight, but I was able to do it. Anyway, after you beat this enemy, you'll get another spoil notification screen. Your experience will be 2,550, 230 AP, and 920 gil. And you just get yourself some magic, ash, and meteorite. Not the final drop yet. After you're done with this enemy, just go ahead and finish up the cutscene and make your way back to Isabel. Once you're done with Isabel, she's going to hand you a collectible for Clive's chamber, the Orichalcum, and meteorite. So there you go. You have five sources of where you can get an Orichalcum for multiple items you can craft in the game. The next material that we're going to need is dark steel, and there's going to be two of them. The first one is going to be the hunt called Usher to the Underworld, which is going to be a monster by the name of Thanatos that you're going to hunt. Sounds a lot like Thanos from Marvel. Anyway, to get to this monster, all you're going to have to do is go to the Dalmalkian region and go all the way south to this obelisk called Kretov. From here, it's going to show that you're in Titan's Wake. You're just going to want to make sure you're turning around the opposite direction of the gate, and you're going to head down this pathway over here. Call on your chocobo and then just run through this area. Cross this bridge and we're going to move our way all the way towards that area. So yeah, go ahead and cross this bridge, pass these enemies, cross the second bridge over here, go through this narrow pathway right through here, past this little gate with a tree. And then right when you're in front of this little ruin thing, you're then going to have the cutscene show up where Thanatos is going to show up with its big old open chest that shoots out a beam. This is going to be a rank A hunt and it's going to give you 17,000 gil and 45 reputation. Now this hunt isn't going to to be too complicated it's gonna have this really big beam attack that he's gonna spread across the entire area and he can completely 360 with it you're gonna want to avoid that because that beam attack is so overused by him it's ridiculous and it does a good amount of damage you can see that it used it three entire times on me now some other attacks that thanatos also does is a charge attack where he jumps up in the air and spreads an aoe so you just have to jump in the air to avoid that one it's also going to do some straight up physical attacks on you that you can dodge and just move around and you want to keep attacking it when it's vulnerable during those so there you go when you stagger it go ahead and do a ton of damage thanatos is also going to have this other attack where he puts his hands on the floor and it's going to create these aoe explosions all over the map the jump up as well he starts comboing it so the lower health they go these s rank hunts the more they start to stack up their attacks together there's the jump there's the explosions happening in the background and here comes the overused charge beam that it does so basically just start to dodge all that and do some chip damage on it during this time once you finally take out thanatos you should be good and get the notorious mark slain screen and you'll be able to get yourself some good xp here you get 9,000 exp 110 ability points 17k gil 45 reputation and i got myself a level over here and you'll get the item dark steel that's the first one we need the next hunt that we're going to be going for is going to be the grim reaper also known as the prince of death now this is going to be available after completing or after you are at the end of the game back to the origin quest should be on your screen in order for you to hunt this one to make things a little faster for you this one is going to be located in the holy empire of sandberg area all you have to do is go to the obelisk in north reach and head over to this area right over here and right in front of you you should be able to see the prince of death so just go ahead and approach it and obviously you can't attack beforehand i don't even know why i did that and the hunt should begin it's going to be rank a so it shouldn't be too bad Fifteen thousand gil 45 reputation pretty Pretty good and just get to work on this one this one's going to be level 40 now it's going to do these teleport attacks and <laughs> what i did is i started the fight off by using this ability and it already teleported so i literally did no damage on the opening so this is going to do a lot of teleports and come at you with about two to three scythe swings so non-stop teleports into scythe swings so go ahead and do some counters do some dodges and be aware of that besides just teleporting and attacking you it also does a range attack that he can throw at you it's basically a full-blown scythe attack and it does a spinning one that goes into a big explosion when it gets close to you sometimes it'll do multiple spins so just be aware of that you want to stay away from those the prince of death is pretty good at playing both long range and short range nothing too chaotic actually happens besides those attacks it's just a rinse and repeat for those and once you are done destroying the prince of death you'll get the marksley notification and you can see that we are actually getting about 8,000 experience from this as well as 100 ability points and you'll see that the spoils is going to be dark steel and now you have both dark steel you need for this weapon the final material that we're going to be needing is going to be the primitive battle horn. And for this, we're going to be hunting the gobber munch. Yeah, the gobber munch. What a, what a funny name, which is going to be located in the Walud area, which is going to be all the way to the right of your map. This is going to be a 
available during main quest number 65, the Brotherhood. Now, all you're going to have to do is travel over to Isla. And right when you arrive at this obelisk, all you have to do is simply go up towards this ladder area over here. So climb up these steps here. And I'm just going to open up my map to show you exactly the spot. And you're going to climb up this ladder. And right in front of you is going to be the Gobber Munch. So here's my map. So from the Isla obelisk, all you have to do is just go this pathway and go up here and climb the ladder. <laughs> and that's where the Gobber Munch is going to be. After that, you're just going to run up to this. It's going to initiate the hunt. And it's going to be a rank A hunt, which shouldn't be too bad for you. 15,000 gil, 30 reputation. Not too bad. And its level is going to be just 38. So this is going to be one of the easier ones to take out. I saved the easiest one for last. Uh, keep in mind that the Gobber Munch also doesn't have a shield. So you can't really do as much stagger damage to it. So if you're going to want to have a gotcha moment on this monster, you're going to either need to completely freeze it with Shiva's ability as you go through it. You're going to have to either do precision dodges or just do a straight up counter on it. So just go ahead and beat the heck out of this monster. Should be pretty easy. I think the only dangerous move it does is a complete spin attack like this. It moves like a top and it it, it does rip through you. I, that's as far as you have to worry about for this attack. And it, re it really does a lot of damage. And once you beat it up and you finish it off, you should get the you should get the notorious mark slain and the experience will be actually about 4,800, 90 ability points and what we talked about earlier. And you'll see that you get yourself the primitive battle horn. Once you've gathered all these materials, just return back to the hideaway and talk to Blackthorn. Click on use the forge and then there's your weapon right over there. You have Ragnarok or Recalcum, Darksteel and the primitive battle horn and you should be able to craft your 375 damage, 375 attack weapon in the game. This is going to be the best weapon that you could use on your playthrough and you can go ahead and go beat up the final boss with this ultra powerful weapon and you get yourself a PlayStation trophy for getting it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and check out this one over here. Seriously, it'll be really helpful.